The full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening on Tuesday, November 8th at 6.02 a.m. Eastern Time. How can you best work with these energies to have a breakthrough and blossom and grow? Let's find out. We're going to tune in with the tarot. Keep watching. So I'm going to give a quick uh, astrological overview of the energies first, and then I'm going to dive in with tarot reading. Watch for your rising sign first and then your sun sign. If you don't know your rising sign, you can get a free astrology chart at astro.com. And if you like this video, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button. The YouTube algorithm likes that and it will help push the video out to more people. And please do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, timestamps are in the description of the video and in the first pinned comment. So let's just briefly discuss what's going on astrologically in the skies with this full moon lunar eclipse, which is happening at 16 degrees Taurus. We have Uranus conjunct the moon at this time. We also have the North Node in Taurus in close proximity as well. We have Saturn in Aquarius squaring this energy. We have the Sun, Mercury, and Venus in Scorpio opposing Taurus and squaring the energy um, in Aquarius. So we have what's called a T-square. So this can, especially because Uranus involved, this can almost be like, I think of like that expression when there's a car accident and somebody kind of comes out of nowhere and T-bones you, right? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just using a metaphor here. It's like something comes out of nowhere and kind of puts you a little bit in a tailspin. So, you know, there, there can be this energy influence right now of something being revealed suddenly out of nowhere. We know full moons do that. It's conjunct Uranus. It's opposite Mercury. Oppositions can bring some sort of power play, tug of war, release point, but also can be something, again, that kind of comes out of left field. Um, so there could be some surprising news, some surprising um, news regarding love and or money because of the Venus influence in Scorpio. Um, and then with the Saturn sitting there in Aquarius, which we have been dealing with for a while, again, it's about, you know, where can you be a rebel? Where can you find your freedom? Where do the old rules, regulations, definitions, roles, etc., don't fit you anymore? Aquarius is a sign about the future, right? That's their future oriented. So, um, Saturn transiting through Aquarius has been making us all think about what we do want for our future personally and also collectively. But the challenge is that this energy is all happening in fixed signs. <laughs> okay. Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus. So, and Leo is the other fixed energy. All right. So we have this fixed energy, which tends to be rather stubborn. It tends to not like change unless it's, it's changed that person initiates themselves. But even so, fixed sign energy is often slow to make changes. They like things to be, you know, in routines. And that's fine. That's all well and good. That has its place. But we also don't want to get ourselves so comfortable that we get stuck. And this energy is really showing us where we've been stuck, where we need to engineer our own breakthrough so that we can blossom in our lives. So I felt like this quote from Anais Nin was really appropriate for this particular transit. And this really is one of my favorite quotes of all time. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Life is a process of becoming a combination of states we have to go through. Where people fail is that they wish to elect a state and remain in it. This is a kind of death. So at some point, the constraints that we're feeling around us, you know, that, that, that tight bud <laughs> that can be very protective, of course, you know, that, that situation that we've grown so used to, it be almost has become this second skin around us, right? Especially when we're talking about things about identity um, and roles we've played and things like that. You know, it's it, we start to feel like if we're really going to grow into the next level of our life, it's too painful to stay stuck in that old role, 
that old identity, those old clothes, so to speak. So that's the challenge. Whatever comes up for you at this eclipse, can you choose to let it fall away? And can you choose to embrace this new possibility that can blossom in your life once you let go of this state you've been in that mm, isn't really serving you anymore? All right, let's get into your readings. All right, Aries, let's see what you need to know about this full moon lunar eclipse in your second house of identity, self-esteem, and show me the money. So there may be something, again, that, you know, is going to be shifting for you, where you're going to have your breakthrough, and how are you going to blossom. That's what we want to know. Where's your breakthrough? Your breakthrough is getting out of your head. <laughs> Chariot. And there's your energy. Okay. So it is likely at this full moon, here it is, is you're going to have some sort of surprising news, epiphany, revelation that's going to help you move forward rapidly, the chariot, on some sort of very cherished hope and dream and desire. Your energy is showing up here with the emperor. So this is likely to be a significant full moon for you because of the two major arcanas that are showing up. But there's something here with this Eight of Swords where you have been maybe feeling a little in the dark about what is important to you or, um, you know, which financial goal or next direction you should move in. Like what's going to be the most profitable um, or, you know, how might a certain investment pay off for me or whatever. Um, so... I feel like with this, you're going to free your mind and some information is going to come in that's going to show you the path forward. Um, I think it's more the idea of you opening up your mind to at least two new possible directions in your life. Because, of course, the chariot has the two horses in it. You will need to make a choice here with the emperor, which one is going to suit you a little better. Um so again, if we're talking about this idea of breaking through, you may have been feeling very stuck in terms of thinking you have to do what everybody else wants you to do. Um, or you re you're really releasing um, some sort of identity that you've had for at least the, eight, the past eight years, maybe even 18 years, maybe even 15, if we add these two together. Um, so... And really coming back to center back to yourself in terms of what direction makes me most happy. Where do I find my excitement and joy and flow and quickness? Because this is the energy of being very stuck. So you may have felt that your finances are stuck, but they've been stuck because you've been stuck in some way mentally. Money and manifesting money is a lot about it's a lot of it's really a mental game a lot of it is a mental game and there may have been something here where you just mentally you've been just not in the mood or you've been feeling a little like what's the point <laughs> you may feel it especially because mars is retrograde right now too you may be like oh my god one step forward two steps back that type of thing but something comes here that some sort of piece of good news release point again this is about a breakthrough that helps you move forward quickly and bust this. You, you could have had a creative block that's prevented you from thinking of up new ways of how to make money. Or again, like which direction you want to go in. So it is likely that this news comes in that helps take off the blindfold and free you mentally so that you can fly high. Look at this gorgeous chariot here. Um, Uranus is an energy associated with Eureka ideas, Eureka moments. So you really could have an amazing genius breakthrough of some way that you can use your skills and talents and abilities and really shine with your emperor energy and the chariot showing up here. Both are such strong cards of personal authority and success and being seen. So you, you really could have that that mental breakthrough to take your self-esteem, your confidence in yourself to the next level. You're really ready to grow into this next level of your personal authority. And like I said, there may be two possibilities for you to choose from. I would say maybe 
mull it over a little and, and not move actually forward on something for seven weeks until we get out of Mars retrograde. You don't really want to start some, some big project that's important to you when Mars is retrograde. Um, but I think the important thing is that you're going to be feeling back on point again mentally and having that confidence because there is, I feel, some sort of piece of good news that comes in for you. And the good news, again, could be self-generated with some sort of eureka idea you get. So it's just going to depend on your personal situation. But this is very, very good. And I would definitely look to, um, I would, I mean, could be the 7th, could be the 8th. The full moon, of course, is on the 8th. So it might even be the day before. So on the Monday, very possible here with these energies. So really, really good. All right, Taurus. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your first house of the physical body, your identity, how other people see you. So let's see what we need to know. This is a very important full moon lunar eclipse, especially if you have, <laughs> if you have any planets at that 16 degrees Taurus, whether it's your sun, your Venus, your Mercury. Moon, North Node, whatever. All right, so we have an Eight of Cups. Oh, and the Wheel of Destiny. And the King of Swords. All right. So the universe is bringing some sort of very surprising information. Probably related to... Um, to your 10th house of career with this king of swords showing up here but also it could be related to a gemini libra aquarius in your life that's very possible um or i can read this also as a time marker for aquarius season which is happening in about 10 weeks so with the wheel showing up here so with the eight of cups is our first energy there is a realization at this full moon that yeah I have got to emotionally let go. And the wheel could be bringing some sort of surprising information, opportunity. The universe is really aligning to put this emotional shift into action for you. Um, of course, this King of Swords can also be you being extremely decisive that, yeah, I got to take that sword and cut myself loose and free from whatever is holding me back from the next level of development and opportunities. So that's another way to look at this energy. Um, between the 8th and the 10th for you could be very important. But I feel like this energy is going to peak. This full moon lunar eclipse will peak for you on the 8th. It is possible also that you have been wishing for something to leave your life, some sort of role or identity you have been in, and you just haven't quite gotten there yet to release it. And that's okay. You know, that happens. It's a process sometimes. It's likely that the universe will shift it out for you because your thoughts have been on it. You have been focusing on it. You, you have been, yeah, I really don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to show up in this way in the world anymore. So, I think you'll see by Aquarius season very clearly that wh whatever way you let go of an old identity, uh, it's, it's going to prove very fruitful for you in Aquarius season. There might be a new opportunity brought by the universe to step into something totally different. So depends on your personal situation. Apply the energies to your life. Um, but this is very, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, the unit, this is, you know, with Uranus conjunct this eclipse, it's a wild card factor. Anything goes, anything can happen. If a door closes for you, and maybe you are the one who closes the door, you could be closing the door as well and walking away. Whatever gets eliminated, the universe, I think, is going to show you fairly quickly why and how important it was to... To have that wheel turn, that cycle end, and and free yourself from something. They're gonna, it's gonna show you fairly quickly how important it was that you did make that decision and how divinely timed and aligned that decision was also. So this is this is intention and energy, but I feel like since this is the Jupiter energy showing up, Jupiter is a very protective energy. So if something 
if you make the decision to leave or the universe surprises you with something that ends, it is protective. And I know when things end sometimes, especially when it comes out of the blue, we don't always feel that way. We feel like, WTF, why did that happen? Really right now? Like seriously, that had to happen? And then, you know, we get stuck in that like regret and pain and, you know, well, why did that happen? Rather than trying to pull back and look at the bigger picture and just take a tone of patience and be like, all right, let's see how this plays out. This may, this rejection may have actually been a protection for me. So you may also be taking up the sword to defend yourself in some way by rejecting an opportunity that doesn't sit well with you, or again, that would lead to you um, forging an identity or a role in a direction that doesn't feel right for you. So that's another possibility. But ultimately, there is the sense of whatever goes down, it is protective, even though it may not exactly feel good at the time. But it is leading to a major cycle ending shift that's going to be, I think, really emphasized also for you in Aquarius season. All right, Gemini. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this suggests it's time to break through some old conditioning and blossom into new ways of doing things. A new and stronger belief in yourself. We have the Strength card and the Nine of Cups and the Four of Swords. Okay. So the Four of Swords is interesting that it is showing up here because this is a card of sleep and our subconscious is very active in our sleep with dreams and images, metaphors, communications from the other realms, etc., that bubble up in our dream life. Um, so I feel like over the next several days, until probably the ninth, the nine of cups showing up here, the eighth and ninth especially, you may have very active dream life. You have Uranus also transiting through that 12th house, which can bring sudden epiphanies, revelations to light, um, eureka ideas that come out of nowhere. Um, so I feel like very strong epiphanies and ideas of how you can manifest and wish that's very important to your heart is likely to break through over the next several days. So I'm feeling like also because the strength card is showing up here, there is something about finding the courage in your heart to go for something that does mean a lot to you, something that you have a very strong appetite for, a very strong passion for. This may have something to do with your uh, work and well-being. could be something like that because your sixth house is also being very activated at this eclipse. Um, but I feel like the time of hiding away and thinking you can't do something or hiding away and playing it safe is coming to a close. There is something here about you finding that inner courage and fortitude to make a dream happen for yourself. And I do feel it's something, again, a eureka moment, um, some sort of um, opportunity that may come in for you with this Nine of Cups uh, and also the North Node in that 12th house that kind of comes out of left field out of nowhere. And it's going to require you to dig in deep and be like, I've, if I want this, I've got to do it. I've got to face down <laughs> any uh, anything inside of me that's not encouraging me to go for it. And I got to go for it. I got to look my situation square in the face and choose to find that courage. So this is very, very interesting. You can choose, of course, it's all about your choices. You can, you can choose to stay hidden away in the shadows in obscurity if you want. That's, of course, you can. But I think you're feeling with that, you know, our Anais, Anais Nin quote, 
you know, you're feeling like this situation of being kind of in the shadows, it's not working for you anymore or, or playing small or feeling like you just got to kind of sit over here on the sidelines. You know, there's something here where I think you're going to have some sort of epiphany that you need a bold new adventure. But it's it's like, yes, we hope that things just just kind of come to us. But and sometimes they do. Um, but a lot is about what's going on inside of us and the opportunities that we make for ourselves. So this is a lot about you stepping out in courage and faith to go for something you really want and not hiding yourself away. Something that could get presented to you and you've got to not have the same old response. Oh, no, no, I can't do that because of X, Y or Z. Mm -mm. Now, with Mars retrograde in your sign, it is possible that some sort of opportunity comes back from the past that's been lying dormant, so to speak. And it could come out of the blue. That's very possible. Um, but again, you don't want to have the same old reaction to it. Oh, that's not for me or whatever. This energy, this full moon lunar eclipse in your 12th house is really helping you clear out the cobwebs of whatever has been kind of going on subconsciously behind the scenes for you and get you out of a hideaway comfort zone and get you into a place where you're going to be more seen and it's really about a little bit of a tense test of strength and fortitude to go for this dream. A wish can be absolutely fulfilled for you, Gemini. But you need to step out and claim it and go for it. The full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house. Cancer of hopes and wishes and dreams, gains, networks, and friendships. So let's see what we need to know for you. This full moon lunar eclipse cancer we have the five of cups and we have the four of pentacles which is our taurus energy and we have the wheel of destiny okay so there may be some sort of disappointment that comes to light so some sort of you know we're talking about a breakthrough so letting go, shedding an old identity, etc., shedding an old wish or hope, maybe shedding the idea that it has to be a certain way, um, you know, whatever you're trying to manifest in your life, whatever gain you are looking for, um, full moons bring things to light as we know. So there could be something where you're kind of like, okay, I may need to accept that a certain direction of my life that I'm trying to manifest, a certain wish or hope or dream is just not viable at the current time. It doesn't mean it won't be viable at some other point, but right now mm, it may not be. But what I think is going to happen for you fairly quickly within a month's time is you're going to see the universe will bring you some sort of beautiful um, turn of events that will show you what will bear fruit, what is solid. You will make a solid gain for yourself with this Four of Pentacles, which is our Taurus energy. So I think by the time we have Jupiter uh, moving direct again and moving forward into Aries, which happens at the very start of Capricorn season, I would say right around the solstice, the winter solstice, 21st, 22nd maybe, um of december you are likely to get that information from the universe that oh this is what's going to bring me the solid gain that i want in my life it is possible also with this five of cups if we're looking at the 11th house in terms of friendships you may see very clearly um how which friendships are are not going to stand the test of time and which ones will, the solid people who always have your back. And again, there's something here with the universe. The universe could bring some information to light to show you who falls into which camp. So that's another way to look at this energy. As I said to, I believe I said to Taurus, you know, if there is some sort of rejection, rejection is protection. So if there is something that the universe takes out and brings as a disappointment, Know that it's because something solid and better is coming in for you with this four of pentacles. So I think that this is very positive overall, but the type of thing is it's 
it's not always easy, as we know, to break through and grow to the next level. Um, but what I'm also feeling is you may need to let go of some disappointments. Like maybe you've been holding on to a certain direction. This, this four of coins, if we read these two together, you've been holding on to dear life to go in a certain direction that maybe just keeps disappointing you. Why are you doing that? You might want to ask yourself. Um, because it's likely that the wheel is trying to turn and bring in something better for you. But because you're still <clears throat> clinging on to the past disappointment, it's having a hard time shifting the energy. So you may see very clearly at this full moon where you do need to let go, cut your losses and be like, yeah, you know what? This is not going to happen currently, or this friendship is not viable anymore, or I've manifested as much as I could. If we're looking at gains here, I've manifested as much as I could out of this situation. The timing's not right for it to continue. I got to shift gears. So that may be another another way to look at these particular energies. Um, it's interesting, these two, because this can be a lot about stepping into the unknown on faith. And this is a lot. I just want to have my safety security. I just want to hold on to what's near and dear to me and not move a muscle. So there is something here to look at also of getting out of, um, you know, some sort of physical rut as well, some sort of way that you're just kind of keeping your energy contained as it were. It's time to let your energy flow and free itself a little bit more. Um, it's time to go out and meet and greet and make new friendships and new connections. Uh, as we know, with these two energies, there could be some disappointments in that regard. But if you would just get out of your house, <laughs> this four pentacle, out of your comfort zone, you could also make some viable new friendships that could be of great, great benefit for you with this wheel showing up here. So interesting energies. Leo's the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of career. This is also the house of status. So this can also have something to do with your status update on social media. Are you married? Are you single? Divorced? Self-employed? Retired? Etc. So let's see what we need to know for you. Leo's. We have the Eight of Swords. And we have the Two of Cups. And we have your energy, the Sun. Okay. So where there has been darkness, confusion, doubt, delay, there will be light. <laughs> the beautiful sun card here. Um, I think what's really coming to light here at this full moon for you is where are you going to be most happy? Um, Eight of Swords can sometimes be stuck in our head, a mental block. I really just can't see the way forward, what I'm supposed to be doing, not doing. I don't know. Um, I feel like this full moon lunar eclipse is going to help you break free from a mental web of your own making and help you pull off that blindfold and see the light and see very clearly either a situation supports you or it does not. I think with this two of cups, it's kind of like it's it's going to be either one way or the other. And it's time for you to to stop being in denial about it and see it clearly because you deserve this. You deserve your full happiness and you deserve full alignment with your energy in whether we're talking a career situation or we're talking about your status, as I explained before. So. For those of you who are willing to be courageous, sign of the heart, right? If you're willing to have that courage, and we, the word courage comes from the French cour, which is heart. So if you're willing to take a heart and put your heart first and take off that blindfold and be real and see what you need to do to break through this web, the universe would like to bring you the blossoming of some beautiful situation, a beautiful deal, a beautiful connection. This two of cups and the sun card is gorgeous. So well, whether we're talking about you manifesting a more supportive work environment, um, a business deal, a business partnership, um, 
you know, we also we have the two butterflies here as well. So this is about seeing very clearly who can help you and help you blossom and transform your world positively in this area and who cannot. And it is likely that you have to leave some situation behind that may have been full of lies and Fibonacci's, as I like to call them, lies and baloney BS. Um, because I always think with the spider's web, um, especially with this card of that Shakespeare quote, you know, about, um, oh my God, now I'm like blanking out on it. Well, first, you know, we practice to, wait, oh my God, I can't think of the quote, but it's basically, you know, well, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the tangled web that somebody maybe has even been weaving around you to deceive you in some way, a truth is likely to come out, as I said, and you're going to see, yes, this is right for me or this is not right for me. So what I love about this, though, is that this brings the promise. If you will just allow the truth to come in, if you will just accept the bright light of truth and take off that blindfold and not let yourself be deceived and not deceive, you know, maybe you not deceive yourself. Don't let other people blow smoke up. You know where you will manifest this gorgeousness for yourself. This is the blossoming. And this is fantastic. So it could also be, I mean, it depends on your personal situation. It could be that you're going to be leaving the darkness behind, so to speak that maybe you do, you are going to see very clearly how somebody truly values you and has your best interests at heart and wants to make you happy, whether in a business way or a personal way. So it could be if you were kind of waiting for something to happen, you know, somebody you're waiting on a decision or, you know, you've just been in the, like I said, in the dark about something, um, you could get the very affirming energy of yes here. So that's very nice. And thus, you'll be letting go of one situation and stepping into something that is much more favorable for you. And the butterflies do represent transformation. So this is trans the transforming power of happiness and allowing yourself to choose happiness through honesty. So... And again, you're going to see that very clearly. If a situation, if you're getting the sense that a situation is not of integrity, it is dishonest in some way, that's going to be the block <laughs> that needs to be shed so that this can come in, so you can blossom into this. This Everything is known under the sun. The sun shines the light of truth. So if you would like to experience this two of cups for yourself, like I said, a business deal, a better connection, a business partnership, a partnership in your life, something happy and joyful, then the truth must set you free. You must set yourself free with the truth in whatever way it comes to light for you at this full moon lunar eclipse. And as we know, Eclipses can, can bring endings, so there is likely to be a major ending turning point. This doesn't always have to be negative, okay? <laughs> and I, I don't think it is. The promise here of this blossoming is gorgeous, but it requires the truth and nothing but the truth. All right, Virgo, so this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life, the direction your life is going in. Let's see what we need to know about this for you. So there could be one door closing and another door opening, very surprisingly, since Uranus is involved. Okay, let's see what we need to know. We have the Empress. And we have the Six of Wands. And we have the Page of Swords. Oh, Virgo, I love this for you. So something is ready to be born. Something, I mean, something is coming to fruition at this full moon lunar eclipse, the Empress. Uh, some creative project, something you've been nurturing with a lot of loving care. Uh, whether in a personal sense, 
you know, having to do with your home and your family or something to do with your business life, um, a creative project, as I said before, whatever it may be, it is coming with some sort of beautiful Six of Wands, excellent news coming in with the Page of Swords showing up here. So there's likely to be an important email, an important letter, writ some sort of written communication could involve a contract. It's very possible. Um, again, it's something that you've been nurturing, possibly working toward for the last three months to three years that you've been pouring a lot of your heart and soul and energy. This could even go back to nine months ago. This could also go back to Pisces season of this year. So, you know, it's, it's something that you have been patient about. You have, as I said, been working on it intently. And because the Empress is showing up here, it's something that matters a lot to you because it's the major arcana. So this new direction in your life, this, this, this big picture perspective that of this project and how it could, and I say project in quotes, how this could re really change your life and move it in a positive direction. You're seeing the evidence of that at this full moon lunar eclipse. So Six of Wands is a beautiful, beautiful energy of victory and success. Um, she's kind of, I love this, the look on her face. She's kind of like, is this really happening? Uh, yes, it is really happening. You may need to kind of pinch yourself a little bit and, and <laughs> really like, wow, this is coming to a rapid and fast uh, result resolution. Uh, and I, I, I'm, kind of shocked and surprised at how this is playing out. But you really shouldn't be in a sense because you've been doing the work, the Empress. You have been, like I said, patient and focused on getting results in this particular area of your life. Now, the ninth house also rules any type of international business, internet. Um, it rules academia, writing and publishing, you know, big projects. It rules universities. Um, you know, higher education, um, metaphysics, those types of pursuits. But I like to shorthand it and call it like the vision of your life. So Six of Wands is a card of authority. It is also a card of good news. The, the person who's been out on their journey comes back to town and lets everybody know, hey, <laughs> I'm back and I'm ready to rock and roll. So and it brings, it brings news of leadership, leadership opportunities, stepping into higher visibility. And it likely has something to do, as I said, with a contract. It could have something to do with a communications pro project, uh, ideas of the mind, as you can see the sword on top of the page of swords here. Um, because we're talking about academia and we have this energy too, there, there could be something here where, um, you know, you're, you're graduating in some way. You've learned some sort of important uh, lesson that's going to serve you well for your future and you're taking it on board and taking it to heart and you are putting that lesson into practice in the real world in some way. So that I always, you know, say things like when you've learned a karmic lesson, you've got your PhD in that, right? <laughs> like, oh, dealt with a lot of narcissists. Oh, I have my PhD in narcissism. Okay, <laughs> you know? So it can be something where, you know, you've learned a very important lesson, especially about perhaps patience with this empress here, uh, focused intention, nurturing your creativity and your uh, creative dream. And so, you know, you pass the test, you are graduating to the next level in your life and you're graduating into the next level with this authority, this six of wands, this victory and success. So... Very, very nice. Um, I also feel since we have a page of swords here that there's likely to be um, another brainchild that that is born out of whatever comes to a successful conclusion at this full moon lunar eclipse. So there, you, you may think, oh, this is wrapped up now. And in a sense it is, but then because it has wrapped up with such success, it's going to lead to the next opportunity. These two are connected. I also think this is just the good news about this, but I think this is also going to lead to another communication of the next opportunity for you. 
So very interesting energies here for you, Virgo. All right, Libras, let's see what's going on for you. Full moon, lunar eclipse in your eighth house of personal transformation, sex, death, taxes, other people's money, inheritances, intimacy, and the occult. All right. Let's see what we need to know. Libras, the Knight of Cups, and the Ace of Swords, and the Ace of Pentacles. All right. Wow. So what is likely coming to light at this full moon, and here's your energy, is some sort of swift emotional shift in the wind. <laughs> um, I think you're letting go of something here and instead committing to something else. So you may be letting go of whatever expectations you have had about something to do with this eighth house. So maybe you're finally letting go of an intimate relationship that is not going to work out. Or maybe because the sword can cut things away. Maybe you're letting go of um, thinking that of a funding source. Maybe you're just emotionally and letting go of, um, you know, some sort of bad habits that don't serve your well-being. Eighth house is 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 very psychological as well. So you could be letting go of some, you know, emotional, like I said, bad habits that aren't serving you and recommitting yourself to things that are good for you. Ace of coins that help enhance your self-esteem. Um, it is possible also for some of you that you are, um, this, uh, this change that comes in this emotional energy, the emotional shift has you letting go of, um, one thing to say yes to something else. So you could be, like I said, cutting loose one relationship in favor of another relationship, especially an intimate partnership. You could be letting go of one funding source, one job where you got your money, so you can have a different job to get different money because it's other people's money. You could be, um, other people's money, you could be getting some sort of funding that's going to bring a positive emotional shift to your life. But there's something here too, since the aces are here, about um, blossoming into greater personal responsibility over your mindset and over your finances. Um, and also accepting the fact that you may have to start over again. because the aces are showing up here. So there may be a funding source that gets cut out of your life, but what it is causing you to do is look to see where the universe wants to put you next so that you can plant a bigger seed and blossom into something greater financially. So that's possible for you also. So emotionally, there may be some stuff to wrestle with at this full moon lunar eclipse to just accept emotionally, you know, I got to make up my mind here. Maybe it's showing me in this full moon that this emotional support that I've been expecting to help me with my transformation of whatever it might be, whatever you're transforming is not coming or it's, it's it has gone as far as it can go. It's not going to continue. And I've got to accept that fact and make the decision that I better plant myself in a new situation. So that's another way to look at these energies. It's just going to depend. Um, there could be good news with this Ace of Swords of you successfully transforming yourself. Aces are about the self uh, in whatever capacity that might be physical, mental, emotional, financial. Maybe you've transformed something that has been a bad habit eighth house and you're feeling a sense of renewal and accomplishment and just feeling good. Pentacles for me are also about self-esteem. You're feeling good about yourself that you have accomplished this victoriously and you are ready for fresh challenges because you have slayed this dragon, so to speak, in your life. So that's another way to look at these energies. You've slayed a dragon, an eighth house dragon, 
that has caused you some problems in your life. So just apply the energies to your life. Um, but what I really feel is that what you want emotionally is at the forefront of this full moon lunar eclipse. And you may have to accept that something absolutely must be cut away from your life. Something that could have been there a long time too. We're talking about the eighth house, something that could be very karmic in nature. Specifically, if we're talking about a relationship since we have a knight of cups showing up here. But this is in order to bring you something better, likely in the spring. I would say likely in Taurus season of next year. All right, that's just my opinion in looking at this, this energy. So, um, interesting energies here, Libra. Scorpio, full moon lunar eclipse in your seventh house of personal relationships and business connections as well. So let's see what we need to know. Where might you be having a breakthrough in your personal relationships so that you can blossom and grow? Let's find out. Scorpios, five of swords, and the three of swords. Oh, isn't that charming? And the eight of wands. Okay. Alrighty then. Well, some of you may still be, uh, some of you may still be in a state of blockage about your personal life. Um, however, this full moon, I think, can bring a major healing and release point for you. If you choose to go that route, like it's all personal choice. It is time to leave behind the anxiety and heartache from the past and move boldly and confidently into your future. This eight of wands. Um, there's something still to be healed. It's, it's in process. Absolutely. But this can also be, it's already happened. I'm not saying this is necessarily going to happen at this eclipse. But there could be something that reminds you of someone who you've already ended a relationship with. Uh, there could, again, just be, you know, the realization at this full moon of where am I at in my healing process with this relationship that may have recently ended three months ago, five months ago, three weeks ago, whatever the case may be. Um, three years ago, five years ago. So... It's, I feel this is shining a light more on your healing process. And there's something here where you may still have to remove a mental block because the swords are mental. You may still need to remove a mental block about this relationship's hold over you. Not necessarily the person, but the relationship's hold over you. Um, it could be thwarted dreams. It could be somebody who some sort of cruelty you're still healing from. Um, this person, cause look at this card. This is like mother hell here. It's like she, this person could have really done a number on your self-esteem, your mental, like there could have been some mental abuse that was going on there. Um, so you'll get through this. And like I said, I think this full moon could really just be that release point. This would be a great time since we got the fire here. This would be a great time to write an unsent letter and burn it appropriately. Okay. With using all fire and safety precautions. All right. So that could be a great thing to do. Uh, but what I feel is that once this wraps up for you, once once you remove this block, once you heal this, and I feel like, again, I feel like there's a major turning point here for you with this energy of wrapping up this cycle for yourself. You're going to have so many possibilities come into your life very quickly with this eight of wands. This is, you're going to be spoiled for choice, for new connections, new relationships, whether business or personal or both. And they will come in very quickly for you. And they will feel very natural and they will be very heart centered because this is our Leo energy. It will heal your heart. And this is not just romantic. This is also new friendships coming in, I feel. 
This is this is just energy that's going to boost your spirits. This is very like fast moving energy. You're going to be caught up in the flow of of just feeling good and being with people whose company you enjoy and feeling like you're back on fire again, back in the world again, enjoying life again and having lots of possibilities for yourself. This is a great energy. Um, so really use this energy of release, Scorpio, at this full moon lunar eclipse and accept where you're at with your healing process. What's done is done. If something comes to light here with a third party situation, with some sort of mental, emotional abuse, because um, some of you, maybe you didn't let go of that yet. This full moon lunar eclipse is really putting the spotlight on that situation. If you have that going on in your life and it's, it's really kind of showing you where this energy is, it's the devil, you know. <laughs> but it's also keeping you from beautiful new opportunities opening up for you. So I never tell people what to do because it's general reading. So if you're in a situation like this, you know, this is time to really look, go back to my Anais Nin quote from the beginning. Look at how by staying stuck in this, this heartache, uh, it is kind of, it's keeping you from, beautiful new beginnings and lots of beautiful new beginnings because it's the eight of wands. Um, but everybody has their own process and thing that they go through here, but you may indeed reach a point of no return if you're in this type of situation now at this full moon lunar eclipse. So the promise here to you, what can blossom and grow in your life is so beautiful and has so much potential. So I hope if you're in this situation that you choose your future, Scorpio. All right, Sagis, full moon lunar eclipse in your sixth house of work and well-being. Let's see what we need to know about that for you, Sagittarius. We have the Ten of Wands and we have the Seven of Swords. Oh boy. And we have the sun. Okay, well, I like that. That's good. Okay. All's well that ends well. We just got to get to the ending. <laughs> got to get to the ending. Um, got the Leo energy showing up here, which is our heart-centered energy with the sun card, which is the big picture perspective of your life, your ninth house. Seven of Swords, which is my Fibonacci card, trying to get away with something, uh, sometimes self-deception. And we have the Ten of Wands, which you can see this person cannot even stand up because of the burden they are carrying on their back. So I think what is likely to occur at this full moon lunar eclipse is a point of no return where the truth is going to be staring you in the face about you cannot endure much more of whatever situation is going on for you with work or your well-being or both. Uh, you are reaching the end of the line with this Ten of Wands. Um, and the sun card is interesting here because the sun shines light on the truth. You can't hide the truth under the sun. And the Seven of Swords, of course, look, the card of darkness, right? The person trying to get away with something under cover of night. So the truth will out and the truth of the matter is uh, you can't kid yourself anymore about what has to shift and end and be done with in this area of your life. There is something better for you. There is healing for you. The sun card is beautiful. Uh, there is uh, new opportunities for you. There is um, greater personal satisfaction for you, maybe something that involves more creative work for you, uh, more joy, maybe some travel, all right? But none of that's going to happen if you stay stuck in thinking you can keep kind of sliding under the radar and kidding yourself that you can just keep putting up with this and putting up with it and putting up with it. So the universe could bring 
some sort of breaking point when it cut and and some sort of you know breaking point is a little harsh maybe but some sort of uranus revolution revelation that you know this cannot continue whatever you've been kind of in denial about cannot continue sag now it's interesting because you are the truth teller of the zodiac um but but sometimes we're better at telling other people the truth than telling ourselves the truth about something so this suggests to me that it's time to find your place in the sun all right and the first step toward that is by admitting the truth of your current situation whether work or well-being and what has to change in the overall direction of your life to bring greater happiness healing and satisfaction um so also with the seven of swords here and the ten of wands since this is also a well-being house there could be something that comes out of the woodwork in terms of your well-being so in other words it's it could be something because again full moons bring to light it could be something that is like okay if you continue down this path and you keep fibbing yourself about this issue it's not gonna go well but if you tell the truth about it and you accept it and you take action on fixing it it is likely to have a healing and positive result with the sun card so you need also fresh air you need sunshine you need uh you know creative time to yourself so there may be some important boundaries you need to put into place with your work you cannot continue to shoulder this burden this is burnout as well especially with the seven of swords other people could be um you know taking advantage of you in the workplace maybe making promises oh it'll get better it'll get better it'll get better and it's all a bunch of lies and baloney so that could be going on and you keep hanging in there with this ten of wands you're you're shouldering the burden shouldering the burden but then you know something's got to give and i think it, it comes to light at this full moon lunar eclipse like enough is enough and the the light of the truth is shining in your face so like i said all's well that ends well it's time to choose your heart it's time to choose appropriate boundaries it's time to choose things that make you feel uh, more inspired as well um it's time for a little vacation if you can take one or at least you know put in for your vacation time and schedule it in and plan it even if it's not till next summer it doesn't matter it'll give you something to look forward to um but the sun is also a card of our vitality so it's important for you to see and honor at this lunar eclipse where you need to make some changes when it comes to your own personal energy and vitality and not letting yourself get run down and used seven of swords used by a bunch of liars and fakers Capricorns full moon lunar eclipse in your fifth house love romance creativity children the house of the entrepreneur taking risks pleasure what do we got Capricorns the ace of swords and the knight of cups mm. and the strength Ooh, very interesting okay so now remember full moon lunar eclipses are often about endings endings don't necessarily have to be bad it could just be something ends so it moves on to its next phase so it's going to depend what's going on in your personal life i'm going to read this a couple different ways uh ace of swords can be a lot especially if we're talking about a full moon eclipse can be something where you cut something loose so some of you may be cutting loose a personal relationship because it is not right the heart of the relationship is not correct okay so there could be a, a, a big emotional shift because you do want a heart-centered connection you want both things you want the heart 
uh, the heart connection, you also want, that's the Knight of Cups here, you want the love and the romance. But the Strength card is interesting because, yes, it rules Leo, the sign of the heart, but Strength can also be about lust, can be about a strong physical passion and connection. So it's kind of like you want both. And you may see at this full moon lunar eclipse, if this applies to you, that either you're going to cut this loose because it doesn't work for you in both of these levels, or you're going to say yes to something because it's moving from just romantic, like maybe there's been some, you know, flirtation and whatever, and then it moves to, you know, some sort of deeper, more intimate connection, because this is also your eighth house, Leo showing up here of intimacy. So it could be something like that. So either saying yes to deepening an intimate commitment or letting it go because it's not right for you. That's possible. Others of you, what may be happening is you are wrapping up some sort of creative project um, or you've been waiting on an answer to a creative project. And you may, in fact, get some very, very positive news here with this Ace of Swords, Knight of Cups and Strength. There could be just some news that makes your heart so happy that this project has come to this um, at least current successful conclusion. I mean, there's always phases of development with any type of creative project. So it could be something like that as well. This is other people's money also with this eighth house. So there could be some important meeting on the cards, so to speak, Knight of Cups involving funding for a project. Um, so it could be that you get the news that the meeting is a go. It's going to happen. I'm not saying you necessarily get the news about the money at the full moon eclipse. You could. It's possible. Um, there, like I said, could be a contract in your future. There could be an important meeting with this Knight of Cups. Um, what this is really speaking to me, though, is in this fifth house area, What what is going on, <laughs> Capricorn, in that area? I mean, Capricorn, what is going on in your fifth house? Are you happy with the creative projects you're working on? Are you happy with your entrepreneurial life, if that's what you're doing? Are you happy with the risks you've been taking or not taking? Are you happy with the current state of pleasure in your life? Are you happy with a romance, your dating life, etc., your children? This may bring to life light this full moon lunar eclipse. What does need to shift? In other words, what you need to make up your mind about, ace of swords. Um, and it's not just your mind, but well, it is your mind, but also what will bring a positive change in your emotional state, the knight of cups. And this may also involve you connecting with more people, connecting on a deeper level, connecting on a different level. In other words, you know, what would make your heart most happy? So there may be some things you're shifting out. This full moon lunar eclipse is shining that spotlight on things that have to be shifted to bring in more heart-centered, heartfelt connections in your life, whether that connection involves something with your own creativity, that connection involves, you know, uh, romantic relationships, etc. The, the areas I already explained. So... I feel like you already have a lot going for you, but it's time to really hone in and center in on the best things in life for you. Not just the things that, you know, are on a to-do list, but is your heart really into these things? And also, because this is your eighth house of transformation, what can bring the most positive transformation to your life? Especially emotionally. Like we, as we know, Capricorn, we're getting ready for Pluto to move out of your sign and go into Aquarius in March. Every Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, Venus is like, oh, thank God. Okay, <laughs> like, you know, so you've been through the mill. You've been through the wars, so to speak. Like you've been through so much. You've come out the other side. You've learned what is important to you and what is not. I mean, how could you not? When Pluto goes through your sign, it's like the wrecking ball just makes you get down to reality and, you know, what is essential and what is not. 
So now we're looking at this last, you know, kind of area of your life in terms of what is essential and what is not and what is your heart truly into. And let's not forget, we have Saturn in your second house right now of money and values. So, and that is your ruling planet. So Saturn squaring this energy, this Uranus and um, full moon, etc., is again, what do you value in this fifth house area of your life? And how does this support the transformation that you most want to create in your world? Moon, lunar eclipse in your fourth house of home, family roots, what nourishes you and what feeds you, the foundation of your life. This full moon lunar eclipse will show you exactly where the cracks in the foundation are. It's like growing pains. It's like leaving the nest onto greater things. All right, Aquarius, what do we need to know for you? The temperance energy and the ace of cups. Thank you, Ariel. And the sun. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Thank you, Ari. So this full moon is likely to show you what is really out of balance and what does need even greater patience in your life as well. Um, if that's even possible, right? At this uh, full moon lunar eclipse in your home family roots situation. Uh, there could be a positive positive change on the horizon in your fourth house, but likely some situation that has been problematic and out of balance needs to be let go of. So this, this could be any situation in the home. You could be dealing with somebody who has a temperance problem, who perhaps is an impatient person, or they have balance issues. They have alcohol issues. Uh, they uh, have codependent issues, things like that, where they don't have a, they don't have equilibrium. So there again could be a situation coming to light that has been out of balance, including a person who's out of whack, like I just explained. Um, and that situation is causing instability in your, the foundation of your life in some way. Um, I'm going to read this a couple different ways. This ace of cups here, ace is for me or about the self. So there could be an emotional connection that um, again, if it has been unbalanced and you have been patient with it, you're hoping it changes. It could be that you have to choose yourself and make a decision to put yourself first in this situation. And if you do that, you will bring in a better relationship for yourself. You will bring healing to yourself. This is your seventh house of relationships, the sun card, the Leo energy, and you will heal your heart as well. So there could be something like that going on. You know, we can't ignore the fact that, you know, full moon lunar eclipses often bring endings. So again, there is likely to be some sort of ending with an unbalanced situation with a family relationship or somebody you consider family. Family's not always blood, right? So it could be somebody you consider family. But what needs to shift is, again, a greater emphasis on yourself and taking care of your own emotional needs in the situation. That that's what's also gotten out of balance is that you've been pouring too much energy perhaps in trying, you know, you're a very humanitarian energy. You want to fix things. You want to be helpful. You've been pouring too much energy into trying to fix somebody. And you may see at this full moon lunar eclipse, you can't fix them. The situation, I'm not going to say it's unfixable, but it's not up to you. The other person, the one who's out of whack, needs to fix themselves, okay? So you can still care about the person, but you take a step back and you put your own self and your own emotional well-being at the forefront. And in so doing, that may be a very different pattern. Remember, we're talking about busting out of some sort of stuck energy, stuck situation you've been in and choosing something different. Saturn is in your sign right now, Aquarius, and it's been forcing you, that's what Saturn does, to face reality, face 
sometimes burdens, restrictions, delays, but really it's the reality planet. So, and Saturn's going forward again. He's squaring this Uranus energy. So you may surprise yourself <laughs> with this by putting yourself first. You learn that lesson. You learn the lesson that you can't fix somebody else. You have good intentions. You are hoping for a positive change. Likely you're going to have to let that go and put yourself, put yourself first. Um, it's a, it's a kind of a tough love lesson. I feel that's happening. That's happening here. Um, but it's, it's going to free you and it's going to bring, I mean, honestly, what I feel with these two cards, it's going to bring healing peace to your life because the situation cannot continue this temperance energy. It's, it's gotta, it's gotta come back to some sort of balance for yourself, but you may have to just care about this person from afar. You can't have them in your daily life anymore, influencing you. So that may be another way to look at this energy. Um, so another way to look at it is those of you who have been dealing with some sort of um, personal situation where you've been trying to find greater, greater balance in your own life with what nourishes you and what feeds you. Like perhaps you've just been working too much. That can happen too when Saturn is transiting our sign. There's just, again, burdens and responsibilities. And, um, you know, you may, may see, you may have a release point from some sort of burden, but again, you may have to have to make the choice to make that happen for yourself so that you can bring greater balance into your life and honor a relationship that needs some TLC and honor your own creative energies as well. So you may see at this, you know, what nourishes and what feeds you, you've been, you've been feeding yourself. Uh, too much work as an example, or too many burdens have been on your shoulders and you need to get back to what is nourishing my heart, what is nourishing me and making some adjustments in your schedule, bringing it to greater balance, that type of thing. So that may be happening for some of you. This is Sagittarian energy. This is Leo energy. So you could be dealing with those two signs, but this can also be um, Sagitt a time marker for Sagittarius season, which starts in only a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, you could be making some very positive changes very soon in this regard, if that's something that fits your situation. Pisces, full moon lunar eclipse in your third house of writing, speaking, teaching, communications, networking, sales, siblings, your daily life in your neighborhood. Hmm. Let's see what we need to know about this for you, Pisces. Full moon lunar eclipse in this area. We have the five of swords and the judgment and the seven of wands. Okay, so you may be dealing with a situation that is going to require a decision on your part. This full moon lunar eclipse is likely to bring some sort of conversation or it, you've been worried about having a conversation with somebody um, because you're worried about their reaction. They may also be rather um, cantankerous, rather annoying to have a conversation with. They may cause you a lot of anxiety. Um, but I feel like there is an important decision looming over probably some sort of close association in your life that does need to end. And it's about having that conversation of ending it. The South Node is transiting through your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. So this is likely to be some sort of conversation that that really is focused in on where you see yourself going in your life. Now, this does not have to be romantic. This can be uh, a friendship. It could be romantic. It could be with a creative partnership, some other type of partnership um, in any of those areas, writing, speaking, teaching, networking, sales, that third house area. Um, 
you know, it could it could possibly be with a with a close female because it's the lunar eclipse coming up here. But um, I'm feeling like this is really about probably somebody in your daily life as well. So daily, you know, daily existence um, that you deal with frequently and making some sort of decision, judgment call on whether this is right for you in the grander scheme of things, in the big scheme of things in your life. Um, the Seven of Wands is showing up here. So this for me, uh, especially in this deck, is a lot about boundaries because it's like she has this ring of fire around her. So this, the reason you may be dreading having this conversation is that it's going to require you to assert certain boundaries or and or you may be dealing with somebody who doesn't respect your boundaries and you've told them time and time again, hey, don't do this. Don't act like this. I, you know, this is I don't put up with this, whatever. And they keep busting your boundaries. And, you know, Pisces energy tends to give a lot of second chances. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you may have also given like 13 chances, right? So you're kind of like, OK, this is really I've been in the comfort zone with this person. I've been maybe ignoring it. I've been maybe busting my own boundaries a little bit and dealing with this, but now I got to have that hard conversation. I got to make that judgment call and protect myself. So I feel like this is really giving you an opportunity to um, communicate your truth in a boundaried way. Um, and also in so doing, wrap up, this is very karmic energy, wrap up some sort of karmic lesson about boundaries um, and also about right communication about how to communicate boundaries how to have tough conversations we all need practice and lessons in that all of us do um, but i feel like this full moon is lunar eclipse is really giving you an opportunity to have that type of conversation i do feel it's likely to be a point of no return conversation where you probably are going to cut somebody out of your life not in a mean way probably okay but but in a way again like you know you've wrapped up the karmic lesson with this person this person came in to really help teach you proper proper boundaries with the seven of wands here um so this is good this is very good um but it may be a little uncomfortable again you may have a lot of anxiety about it the five of swords um because it's not easy to have these these types of conversations uh, for anybody, and so even as much practice as we've had too, especially if you're dealing with somebody who's a little snarky, which you could be with the Five of Swords here. Um, so you're passing a big karmic test with this energy, but you do need to step up and into getting out of the comfort zone of kind of not dealing with this and really face it. And also, don't be afraid to defend yourself either if you need to with this individual. Now, I'm not saying being mean, but again, like asserting your boundaries. And sometimes what that can mean is going no contact, depending on who you're dealing with and the situation. But nobody crosses this ring of fire. Well, unless they want to get burned. <laughs> you may need to put up this ring of fire around you. In other words, they can't reach me on socials. They can't text me anymore. You may need to block this person. You know, they can't uh, show up unannounced at my house, you know, get my guard dog out or I mean, whatever it might be. <laughs> so, um, you know, but that's OK, because like I said, I like this for you because this is a big karmic lesson wrapping up. So we're talking about, you know, blossoming and growing into your greater power and in learning some something with getting, you know, bursting out of this bud. Um, it's getting too uncomfortable for you to continue to ignore this situation. So this is a huge opportunity, Pisces, for personal growth with your boundaries, taking charge and not just just asserting boundaries, but maintaining your boundaries. It's not one and done like it is. It is a process where we continually have to maintain our boundaries with, you know, whoever this person might be, but also just in general. So you got this, Pisces. So thank you so much for joining me for your full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus energy. My goodness, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on for you with these energies. Let's support one another, lift one another up in the comments. Remember, we do live all under the same skies. Everybody's going through stuff. 
So please be supportive in the comments. All right. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Take care. I will see you again soon. Stella Wilde signing out.